Mandy. Mandy, what? do you think that if I tell the people of this church that we put our Christmas tree up before it was Thanksgiving, that it will start a controversy? I think everybody would be on my side, which is put it up. You think everyone would be on your side and say, put it up? No, actually, I don't. I'm like, there are a lot of people. Uh, there are people who take this serious. There are a lot of people who are very passionate about you. You make Thanksgiving the Thanksgiving. You make Thanksgiving the thing. Until. Like, it's turkey time. Yeah. Right up until, like, that meal ends. This morning, Mandy asked me, if you could be any animal, what would it be? Who asked that? The answer is obviously a jaguar because they're awesome and uh, fierce in a modern day cat predator kind of way. But then there's also like prehistoric animals. And that's sort of what an alligator reminds me of with its crazy look and it's like intense teeth and spin action when it gets a hold of you. So I would probably be a jagator. Hello Crossroads, welcome to this week's Anchor Points. Just like every week, we're looking back at this past week's sermon. We were in Luke chapter seven, verses 36 through 50. The idea behind the sermon was people who are EGR people. And as you probably remember, that means extra grace required. I'm sure you know someone. <laughs> With Thanksgiving and Christmas and all that going on, this is sort of the season of challenging relationships sometimes. One of the things that Dave really focused on on Sunday was the idea that the way you continue to carry the heart of worship through the holiday season is by remaining in a place where you have gratitude toward God and you have compassion toward people. And so in that vein, I wanna take a few minutes and I wanna try to give a few practical ways that we can do that over the next month or so as we transition into a new year and all that. Number one, let the vertical the relationship between you and the Lord inform the horizontal, the relationships that you have with people. In 1 John 4, 7, it says, let us continue to love one another for love comes from God. If you're familiar with Christianity, then you're familiar with this idea that the Lord, he is the embodiment of love. He is our means by which to understand love. He's what we're meant to emulate and mirror as we try to love others. I think that you see in the great commandment, which is love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength, and then the second is like it to love others as yourself. I think because of the way that's translated, I don't know if we're fully getting it. And so I would say, try to read it like love God, love yourself and love others. And so the way that you love God, you study his word, you do all the things that we're aware of, like in getting saved and all that. But the way you love yourself is by allowing your relationship with the Lord to sort of inform that. And you allow the Lord to tell you the things that are true about you and to love you by reminding you that you're his image bearer, that you're his son or his daughter. Those are the things that God says about us. We are loved. Similarly, when we love others, we're meant to allow our love for ourselves to inform that. Now that we know that we're loved, we're able to sort of love ourselves as well. And then we're able to give the same amount of compassion that we would give to ourselves to others. Number two is remember that you can protect yourself from difficult people without writing them off. EGR, right? There are just certain people, and I want to be clear, like some relationships, I mean, they're abusive and they're things that there's a legitimate line where if it crosses over into this one, then you do need to create space and you need to be in a place of safety. But then there are other relationships where it's not an abusive thing. It's it's a, it's a challenging thing. Maybe you just don't see eye to eye on, on everything. Maybe you don't get along. Maybe your personality just don't mesh, whatever the case may be. Or maybe somebody is just mean to you for whatever reason. I want to remind us that Jesus went through these things too. There are times where Jesus was in situations where people were just mean to him. And I think we forget that. We remember the cross and we remember that whole story, but we forget that, I mean, just in his life, people were mean to him. John chapter one, verse 46, it says, can anything good come out of Nazareth? In Mark 2, 16, it says, how is it that he eats with tax collectors and sinners? In Mark 6, 3, it says, is this not the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James, Joseph and Simon, and are not his sisters here with us, they were offended at him. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 19, it says, the son of man came eating and drinking. And they said, look, a glutton and a drunkard, 
a friend of tax collectors and sinners. In John 7, verse 4 and 5, it says, if you do these things, they're ta- people who are talking to Jesus are talking about like miracles and stuff. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers did not believe in him. I mean, even his family didn't believe in him as he's trying to preach the kingdom of God coming and as he's trying to preach salvation to, to the world, even his family is like, you're not this. We grew up with you. We know who you are. You're not the son of God. John 8 41. Then they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father and that's God. Even questioning his origin story. Last one we'll do. It says, then the Jews answered him and said, do we not say rightly that you're a Samaritan and have a demon? Like, Sometimes the things that people will say about you or to you, they are totally off base. Sometimes it, what ends up happening is these things and these lies and these, these meannesses that people will throw at us, they begin to take the place in our mind of the things that are true and right and noble and good that the Lord says about us in his word. And what that can lead to, I think, is bitterness. It can lead to feeling like, you aren't who God says you are. There was an interesting quote that uh, it's just a pastor, an old pastor of mine used to say, and it's a bit, uh, crude's not the word, but it's something sort of like that. And he always used to say, bitterness is like drinking poison and then waiting for the other person to die. Some of you, I mean, some of you including me, like we've experienced real hurt, real pain from other people and at the hands of other people. But it's important to not allow that to define you and to create this version of yourself that isn't loving. If you are living with bitterness, you are letting it poison you, and it likely is not making the impact that you would want it to in the person who caused it. So I would encourage you, through the power of reading the Word, through the power of prayer, through the power of connecting with other believers, let that bitterness go. And then last but not least, as we're trying to think of practical ways to be thankful and to be compassionate this season, remember who you were and remember who you are. So the remember who you were, I want to read one verse to you. It's Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4 one of the neater verses in all the Bible. It says, but God who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses or sins, made us alive together with Christ. By grace, we've been saved. If you have been saved, you know that there was a time in your life where you were separated from God. There was this sinfulness in you that was in control. And when you get saved, you give your life to the Lord, you ask Him to become your Lord and Savior, it's like dead coming to life. It really is a brand new creation. I think we all understand that that doesn't necessarily mean that who you are and, and the sinful things you struggle with are just immediately gone. Sometimes it is. Sometimes the Lord works in miraculous ways like that, but sometimes He takes time in working those things out of us. But what I would say is this, just keep in mind that even though that's who you were, who you are now is different. And so you have access now to the Holy Spirit and you have access to a God who will help you to become more and more like Him each and every day. You have access to a God who loves you. I want to leave you with one quote from a guy named Kenneth Boa. He says, There's no act that begins with the love of God that does not end with the love of neighbor. Now, let me read that for you again. There's no act that begins with the love of God that does not end with the love of neighbor. If God has started a good work in you, He will bring it to completion. And part of that is helping you to be more like Him and to love Him his people. As you go into Thanksgiving, as you go into Christmas, just know the Lord's got you. And I think that what you'll find is that the Lord takes you and he does something really good with you. So I'm excited to see you guys on Sunday. Have a great Thanksgiving. Love you church. Later.